Hey everybody, welcome to the video. Welcome to the channel. If you remember on a previous video, we did a little bit of small scale Alaskan milling right here. There are some pieces of cedar that need to be milled up for the future. We're going to take some of that small pieces of cedar. We'll walk over here and look at it. And we're going to take it down to the wood shop and do a little bit of woodworking today. That's not typically what we do on this channel, but it's what I'm doing today. So it's what we're making videos of. This is the cedar we're going to be using. We have these two pieces. We're going to take those over to the wood shop. And I've never shown my wood shop on this channel. It's a very budget wood shop. We're talking ping pong tables, pallets, whatever I could scrap together to make a wood shop. That's what I have. And I have an opinion about that we'll talk about. But while I get this stuff rounded up, we also had these pieces of hickory from a hickory tree we cut down in that same video. We're going to head over and get the hickory top burnt real quick. I'm going to get this stuff rounded up real fast. I've got a helper today because her preschool is shut down for the time being. So that'll work out great as well. We'll head over, get that top burnt up. I'm going to get this stuff together and we'll meet you guys in the wood shop in just a little bit. We have shown these on the channel before, but just in case you're new, whenever we're doing something with kids or we're just doing a camp out and I don't feel like getting the weed burner out or the diesel fuel or the gas to get that fire going and we just kind of want to slow it down that day, we just use these little homemade fire starters. We got a bunch of these old candles from a church at a yard sale a long time ago. We've been using them ever since. Make a little sandwich there. Delicious, by the way. Ham and cheese. Anywho, you just melt the candle down. That is a pot we got from Goodwill, so we don't have to worry about cleaning the wax out every time. And you just pour it into these cardboard egg cartons. When it cools, you break them off. You can either put a wick in there if you want, or you can just light the edge of the cardboard. Your choice. But they do work really, really well. They basically just give you that nice, steady flame to kind of get right. things going. Can you tear me some small pieces? I glue small pieces of that one. Here, just tear one. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, big muscles. Just some big muscles. Yeah, that's the perfect piece. Gonna need a bunch of those. Like this? That's perfect, yeah. This? That is some good advice, and I appreciate that advice. What you got there? Oh, that's the perfect size piece. Thank you. We're gonna do a fix. I don't have this. Will you go burn this? Cause I'm, cause I'm what is it? I can't see it. It's a oh, you can keep that. Yeah. Sure. Why not? Closer still. Here, okay, there you go. Yep. Well, you know what? You're going to put the fire right there. I like mine burnt like that. You can put yours a little, a little lower, closer to the fire. All right, let me see. All right, pull. Pull your stick. And then we'll put our sticks back in here to clean them again. There you go. Where are you at? Where are you? Oh, yeah. There. There's your hot dog. What do you say, pup? Oh, I didn't bring the pup a hot dog. I'm sorry, sweetie. That was my fault. Let's go to a hot dog. 
We all have to go and get one. Rashid's gonna get yours if you don't pay attention. Yeah. All right, so welcome to the very humble, cheap, inexpensive wood shop. This is definitely not a Matthew Cremona, or however you pronounce it, production here. This is pretty low end, and that's kind of the way I like it. You can see my basic setup, bench top sander, a little miter saw, of course, we've got a shop back over there. I have a small shop back I use on the drill press. This is all built out of palace and free and inexpensive. All this stuff here, I used to build shelves and sell that stuff online, and those are the jigs for everything I used to sell. And then I just have my power tools over here, a little bit of wood storage there, a little tabletop router thing that I made out of some pretty cheap, inexpensive scrap material, to be honest, and that actually slides right under there. And then just basic hand tools. This is probably my favorite thing. This is a four by eight sheet. It's three quarter ply, and it comes out here. You see what we've got going down the side and across the bottom that's perfectly square this way these are perfectly square coming off of this that's perfectly square coming off and i went through and took the time to make sure this is perfectly planes this is where i build tabletops cabinets anything like that it's just a big clamp jig obviously i don't have a lot of room for uh you know a big workbench to put big projects on so we just went vertical with it anytime i need this is left over from a project i can just screw whatever i need to screw to this to hold things to clamp things drill holes in the side for clamp spots it works pretty sweet so i don't really show this wood shop very much and honestly i don't do a lot of woodworking anymore either but i thought i'd share this because i see a lot of woodworking channels with the nicest the jet tools the big three phase old school powermatic tools all the grizzlies whatever with the biggest, most expensive, nicest layouts, and they look so nice, and they are great looking shops, and they do put out some amazing stuff, but I think there's a lot of people out there that want to get into woodworking, and they might have the misconception you have to have that expensive stuff to do woodworking, and I just don't think that's the case. You see how low key, how low budget this operation is. We're gonna get started with this cedar. I'm making a couple Christmas gifts for my girls. That's what we're working on. We're gonna get started, and I'm gonna show you how you can take a budget setup like this and turn out some pretty nice fun stuff. So let's get started. All this is, is an old jig I used to use in one of the cabinets I used to make. And I just know it's perfectly square and I want a square about this size. So that's what we're going with.
So I'm running 80 grit sandpaper on that belt sander. And that jig you see me using there, I've always found it awkward to clamp smaller pieces when I'm working with. All that is, is a two by 12 with a one by two on each side and a one by four on the end all glued on. It's just easier for me to just wedge something in and out of there than it is to try to clamp down a smaller piece. It smells, it smells great in here, by the way, between the planer shavings and the sawdust. It smells amazing. Now, let's look at some real quick. So, real quick, personal preference, you guys run them how you want, but this is how I like to do things. I like to leave these little tool marks in here. I always have whenever I make things. I like to leave little tool marks in there. I think that's what makes each piece individual. Each piece has its own little story to tell. I don't want four identical of these boxes. I want four different boxes that each have a little bit of a different story to tell. So me personally, get it as smooth as possible, but still leaving a little bit of those tool marks. All right, let's move on to the next step. So here's where we're at now. This is what we've got. We've got two of these identical boxes, or not identical, but close to identical boxes. The next step is to go up on the router table and get the inside all hogged out. And then I've got all of these made up for next time I wanna make boxes. It just makes sense when you get everything drug out to just go ahead and get some other stuff set up. But the next step was I took one of these blanks, cut it in half that way, and then cut it in half that way, and then cut it in half this way. So that way you can kind of go through this piece and you can pick out the sections you think are better. Like this one has a, you guys can see that pretty big heart crack right there. Um, you can kind of go around and pick out the sections you want better. And it just makes sense, since I had this stuff out, to go ahead and get this done to this step. And the next time I want to make some boxes, I just come down here and pick these up and start right here. Let me get my mess cleaned up and we'll jump up to the router table. So all these lines do, they just tell me how far I can go left or right before I blow out the side of it with the router bit. Now you're going to notice in the time lapse a second set of lines shows up. That's because after the first one, I thought I was leaving my walls just a little bit too thin, so I wanted to make them just a little bit thicker. That's okay, I think we can still get that first one to work. And I need a half inch total depth taken out of this, and I'm just going a quarter inch at a time. Going one round, doing a quarter inch, and then raising it up and doing the last quarter inch to get a total of a half inch depth out of each side. All right, so here's what we ended up with. Now, one of these I'm not 100% happy with. The other one I think turned out fine, but I think we'll make it work either way. Basic idea of that router is just to get the inside hogged out. What we'll do is I'll take a chisel here in just a second. We'll go around and clean up all these edges, get them all looking nice and neat with a chisel. This is the one... I had my measurements messed up when I made the first pass on this. So see how it's stepped an off cut like that? I'm not really happy with the way that looks. Normally if I had enough meat, I could kind of clean that up, but it's gonna be hard to hide that. I think that'll be okay for what we're doing. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I would have liked it to be a little bit closer than that. Either way, I think it'll be fine. So like I said, the next step is to take the chisel and get the inside all cleaned out. The key here is to have a really, really sharp chisel. You don't want to have to use a lot of pressure. If you do, you're going to end up slipping and then blowing through the other side. That's probably the one thing I wish I had in the shop was a good set of chisels, but we've got this one sharp enough that it'll definitely be able to get the job done. And then just a little bit of sandpaper around the inside. All right, here's what we ended up with the inside of this one. It's not too bad. It's definitely not perfect, but I think it'll work fine for what we're doing. And then on the outside, I've got two coats of poly on so far. I want to get the hardware on. We've got hinges, maybe a little latch. I got to see they're a little bit bigger than I thought they were going to be when they came in the mail. Maybe a little latch. We've got a couple little feet we need to put on. And then we've got a mechanism that's going to go inside of here. We got to make sure that fits too. Then we'll disassemble it, uh, touch up a little sanding on this poly and hit it with the final coat. So I've got these little itty bitty hinges we're going to use 
they come with little itty bitty screws. This should be quite the adventure. We'll see how this goes. So I was having some difficulty with that small drill bit. It doesn't fit in your normal drill. So I just took one of my butt connectors, crimped it on there, and then um, smashed, heat shrunk, smashed the plastic around there. We'll see if that works. I just need a little bit to just kind of do that little maneuver. The picture I'm showing you here is that they do make a tool specifically for what I just did there. I just didn't have one, so adapt and overcome, and it worked fine. Looks a little goofy, but definitely got the job done. A little bit of learning curve on this first one. They're not perfect. They're skewed a little bit, and because of that, it does that little thing, but that's okay because I do have little latches to go on these, so that should be fine. But the second one turned out quite a bit better. Those are lined up really well and uh, opens and closes great. So I guess let's do the latches next. Here we go. Not too bad. Closes both of them up pretty tight, but not too tight. It's pulling on the screws to split anything. Next step. We've got these little feet that go on here. So the more I looked at this, the more I thought it was just too much. It was too much for this size of box. So I ended up cutting the top part off, going over on the bench top, cleaning it up like so, and then just put it on the bottom. Which even from the bottom, it looks like a lot, but who's judging the bottom of a box? I'm not. This is what it looks like sitting down. So instead of having this big gaudy piece coming up the corner and taking away from the look of the wood, you just have the little feet on the bottom. I think that'll work fine. Next step is what I've been looking forward to the most. Let's see if we can get the music component inside of these and then we'll let you guys listen to the song. So it just has this threaded part that comes out the bottom. That that little thumb screw screws onto. And I want to drill a hole that is the diameter of that because that's probably just given the length of this that's probably going to, have to go into the wood just a little bit that is going to be the next step getting these mounted in there i wonder if they fit we should try to check that let's see if they fit they do fit awesome Oh dear. I do wish they had, where I got this from, they didn't have a lot of color options on the uh, mechanism. And now we gotta do some screws in there. Did it come with screws? It did come with screws. Four of them. Oh, four machine screws, eh? Now why would you go and do a thing like that? All right, so I didn't have any of these brass screws, so I just went ahead and did the right thing and used the wrong screws. I've been watching way too much Vice Grip Garage lately. Anywho, uh, it holds it in there, and that's perfect, and it fits in there and looks great. All right, just got done taking the thumbnail picks. Got a few planar shavings. Got to do the props and whatnot for the thumbnail. Anywho. This is what we ended up with, and I, I really like it. I'm really happy the way they came out. I'm happy that there's still some tool marks that show up. I'm happy they still have that old handmade look to it. 
think the feet look good. I'm, I'm really happy with the way we cut those down. I don't think they take away from the wood too much. I think originally they did, but now they look a little bit better. Of course, all the latches work like they're supposed to work, which is great. Pretty happy with that. The reason I wanted to make this video, and if you've been with the channel for a while, even just a few videos, you know we don't do a lot of woodworking videos. I do woodworking every so often as a hobby down here, but I don't do videos on it and probably won't again, to be honest with you. The exception to that will be when we get to the YouTube yacht interior, cabinets, tables, trim, stair treads, all that fun, funky stuff. We're gonna to try to do some collaboration videos with other channels that do fine woodworking. I think that'll be a lot of fun and it'll be tied to the YouTube yacht project. But as far as this goes, I don't plan on doing this again. The whole reason I wanted to make this video with as different as everything is right now, there's a lot of people that I've noticed on YouTube, in the comment sections, on other channels, and in Facebook groups, woodworking groups, that are trying to get into woodworking. And a question I see a lot, or the theme to the question I see a lot, is holy cow, do I have to have that huge setup to get into this hobby? And I think that kind of scares people away. You get on there and you see these massive thousands and tens of thousands of dollars worth of setup of tools and shops that people have built to turn out you know, little things like this. And the answer to that is no. And my fear is that people are gonna try to get into a new hobby as a way to kind of escape all this craziness and they're gonna be turned off from woodworking because they're gonna think there's this massive overhead you have to have with it. And that's just not the case. Are these perfect? No, they're, they're definitely not perfect. We did the best we could with the tools we have, but still pretty awesome, man. As long as you can find beauty in that imperfection, you're always gonna be happy with the materials or products. I should say products with the items that you turn out for your friends or family. It's always still going to bring that satisfaction and going to be a great outlet. As far as money goes, this shop is pallets that I grabbed for free from Dirt Perfect's lot. You're sitting on half of a ping pong table that we cut in half. We got for free out of, um, I think it was a relative's basement. All of these tools, Craigslist and Marketplace, the only exception was this sliding compound miter saw I bought new. That's just like I couldn't find a good or a decent used one on there. You don't have to have these big fancy name brand tools. Not these, I'm talking about the other channels and other Facebook groups. You don't have to have that. If you're gonna put your money somewhere, put it in your blades, your bits, and your belts. That's where you need to put your money. If you're running good blades, bits, and belts, you're gonna be able to turn out some nice stuff. I see some of those bigger shops with very fancy equipment run what I would consider a low-end blade and it kind of makes me laugh every time, but that's neither here nor there. The whole point is if you're thinking about getting into this as a hobby, do it. Do it right now. What better time to try to learn something, to try to learn a new skill than, than with everything going on? Some of us have a little bit more home time right now with quarantine and lockdown and that kind of thing. So I highly recommend doing this. It's also a great outlet. It's also very satisfying. It can be stressful, but if you stick with it and finish something out, um, the look on someone's face when you give them a gift like this, it makes it worth it and you just kind of get addicted to it. Speaking of making things in the shop, this showed up, or these showed up a while back actually, and I haven't really had a chance to put them on as a shout out and a thank you, but a gentleman named Mike made these. It's coasters. There's four of them. They stack together. You can see how they're beveled and they stack together like that. They are awesome, and I've been using them with my bourbon glasses because, you know, I'm a fireman, so that's just kind of part of the game, I guess. So, Mike, I really do appreciate these, and it really tied in well to the theme of making things in this shop. So, thank you so much for these. So, with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know it's a little bit different content than normal, but hopefully you enjoyed it just the same. There's only two things left. Let you listen to what's in those music boxes, and I have a little bit of a special message at the end if you want to stay tuned for that, which I hope you do.
clips, some footage of our Gatlinburg trip that Chelsea took us on. We go to Gatlinburg once, if not twice a year. It is gorgeous there, and we absolutely love it. We do some of the touristy things in Pigeon Forge and Gatlinburg area, but what we really love to do is get out in the surrounding area and all the parks and all the trails and all the historic sites and check that out. And there's enough there that every time we go, we're seeing something different. This is Cades Cove. We've never been there before, and it was absolutely gorgeous. We had a really, really good time. The whole reason I'm sharing this is for some of us today, it is Thanksgiving. And this is one of the many, many reasons I am thankful it is my amazing, amazing family. So I thought I'd share that today. And I know this is a strange Thanksgiving. For me, it is definitely the strangest Thanksgiving I've ever experienced. And I wanted to share what I'm thankful for. And I'm hoping you guys can share what you're thankful for as well in the comments. It is weird. It is different. But there's always something to be thankful for. Now, if this is not Thanksgiving for you and you're somewhere else in the world, well, I just hope you're having an awesome Thursday. I mean, you might as well, right? It's just a Thursday. But why can't it be a great one? I do appreciate you guys watching normal upload days Thursday and Sunday. But being as it is a holiday weekend for us. The only thing I'm doing the rest of the week is hanging out with the family, so I won't have a video for you on Sunday, but I'll definitely catch up with you next Thursday. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.